My name is Satoshi Shinozuki at GT Medical University School of Medicine. I would like to talk about the manuscript entitled Long Term Outcome of Patients with Obscure Gastrointestinal Bleeding, investigated by Doug Brown Endoscopy. Obscure gastrointestinal bleeding is a diagnostic challenge which comprises 5% of all GI bleeding. Doug Brown Endoscopy, DBE, enabled us to observe the entire small intestine. The aim of this study is to clarify diagnostic ease of DBE for obscure GI breathing and clinical outcome of obscure GI breathing after DBE. We investigated total 200 patients with obscure GI breathing. Result: total diagnostic yield of obscure GI breathing with DBE was 78% in 155 of 200 patients. Next, we examine the relationship between ease of positive findings and length of interval between last of us breeding and DBE. The diagnostic yield was 80 to 90% within four weeks, however, it decreased in proportion to the time course. As a result, the yield of positive findings for overt obscure GI breeding significantly decreased with the length of interval between last of us breeding and DBE. To maximize the diagnostic yield of DBE for overt breeding, DBE should be performed as soon as possible. Next, we evaluated long-term outcome of the patients after diagnosed with DBE. Patients in whom breeding salt was identified in the small bowel and who was observed for more than six months after the DBE were subject to analysis. We analyzed the long-term outcome in 100 patients. The range of follow-up is about 30 months on average, range 6 to 78 months. Here we compare the rate of obscure GI breeding among three groups. Overall rate of control of obscure GI breeding was about 60%, ulcerous region was about 60%, tumor was about 80%, and vascular region was only 40%. Therefore, small intestinal vascular regions show significantly lower rate of control of obscure GI breeding than those with other small intestinal regions. Patients with small intestinal vascular regions show low rate of control of obscure GI breeding. We tried to elucidate risk factors for liberating in patients with small intestinal vascular region. We identified three significant risk factors of overt liberating. First risk factor was the amount of transfusion before DBE. It means massive breeding before DBE. Second risk factor was multiple vascular regions. If we make a DBE hemostasis in one region, other regions can breed later. Third risk factor was type 1A without oozing. Type 1A means tiny annual ectasia. Type 1A without oozing shows the least clinical significance in the small intestinal vascular regions. If we can find out only type 1 without oozing as a breeding source, different regions may be overlooked by DBE. Follow-up DBE on the word breed liberating frequently can find out different regions in the different site. Summarizing these results, patients with vascular regions of the small intestine should be followed with particular care. Large amount of transfusion before DBE, multiple regions, and type 1 without oozing can be considered strong risk factors for liberating in patients with vascular regions of the small intestine. Discussing these results, since small intestinal vascular regions are frequently multiple, the effect of a single session of local endoscopic hemostasis may be limited, resulting in a low rate of control of obscure GI breeding in this study. Since first DBE cannot always detect different vascular regions, repeat DBEs are sometimes necessary to find out different regions. In our experience, however, repeat hemostasis with DBE improved management of refractory obscure GI breeding from multiple vascular regions. To confirm this, a large prospect study, prospect study is needed. Thank you for your attention.